Hello, and welcome to the next video in the hardware portion of our FTC YouTube series created and hosted by Team Ultra 10539. Today's video will be about the FTC wiring system and configuring your robot. The core of the wiring of your robot will be the expansion hub or the control hub if you're using that. This video will specifically be more centered towards the expansion hub. The expansion hub has three sides with ports on them that you use to connect to stuff on your robot. This side has the motor ports and the battery. This side has the servo ports and the 5 volt power out ports. And this side has the sensor ports, which are analog, digital, and I2C, and also has the RS-485 ports. Connecting a motor to the expansion hub um, is quite simple. All you need to do is you can take your JST-VH cable, which looks like this, plug it into the port in which you want to connect the motor, and plug it into your motor. Um, you could stop here if you don't want encoders on your motor, but if you want an encoder on your motor, then all you'll need to do is take a JST-PH connector, plug it into the bottom of your uh, of bottom of your motor, and plug the other end into the expansion hub. Once you have into the expansion hub on the port, specifically right below the motor port that you just plugged into, this will mean that this encoder to, to the expansion hub, this will mean that encoder, this particular encoder is connected to this particular motor. For connecting servos, um, it's a little bit more complicated than connecting motors. Servos um, have three wires, and there are three pins on the bottom of the expansion hub in which you can plug them in. There's also a little diagram here which shows um, a black mark, a red mark, and a white mark. The white mark corresponds to the white wire on your servo cable. So when you plug them in, make sure you line up the white cable with the white mark of the third pin. So that means that the white cable must always be on the right. Uh, in my case, it's on my left, but in the actual thing, you want to make sure that it's on the right. So closer, facing the side where it says 5 volt power. So once you have that plugged in, if you're using a rev servo, it'll be quite simple because the white will just line up with the white mark there. However, if you're using a servo that has different kind of connection, like these, this one that has a black, red, and yellow, the yellow is the equivalent to the white cable for the purpose of connecting them to the expansion hub. All you need to do is plug this cable in here, like this with the yellow cable again on the right. So, with the servos, uh, with servos plugged in, um, in order to connect a sensor, you'll need to first figure out what type of sensor it is. It could be an analog sensor, digital sensor, I2C sensor. Make sure you look that up on the manufacturer's website to see exactly what kind of sensor it is. Once you have it plugged in, all you'll need to do um, is set it then in the config configuration, which we'll talk about in just a moment. It is recommended not to use port zero on the expansion hub for I2C, specifically because um, this port uh, is soldered to the IMU of the expansion hub. So if you're using the IMU of the expansion hub, um, you should probably not use port zero. You can still use it, it just requires extra configuration in order to make the, servo, the sensors work um, on this particular port. So try to avoid it if you, if you, if you can. Um, so it probably will be easier to deal, not have to deal with that. Um, so uh, in order to connect two expansion hubs together, what you'll need is you'll need this RS-485 cable, which plugs into the RS-485 port. It has three wires. All you need to do is plug it in here and plug the other end into the exact same port on the other expansion hub. Once you have that plugged in, the only other thing you need to do is you need to transfer power from the first expansion hub to the second expansion hub. So you'll need to connect one end of this connector onto this expansion hub on this XT30 connector, and then the other one to your second expansion hub. Now to connect power to your expansion hub, you could just plug the battery directly into the expansion hub, but that is not legal according to FTC's um, documentation, and you will be stopped in robot inspection if you do this. So therefore you need to use a power switch. So in order to make this work, you need to plug your battery into the power switch like this and then plug the other end of your power switch into your expansion hub. Once you have it plugged in, you should be able to turn on the power switch and the expansion hubs will turn on. So now in order to connect it to your phone, all you need to do is you need to take the USB cable with a USB adapter uh, from the USB A to the micro USB, plug it into your phone and turn on that will turn on the expansion hubs. When they're connected to the phone, you'll notice they'll start blinking orange. Though this is normal, this means that the um, amount of amount of power that is being given to the expansion hub at this current, current time is not enough to drive the motors. That means that only the phone is plugged in. So now, in order to actually configure your uh, robot, in order to make it work with two expansion hubs, the first thing you need to do 
um, if you're using two expansion hubs, is you need to change the address of one of the expansion hubs such that the, the robot controller, the phone, can distinguish between the two of them. The way you do this is by going to settings, and then going to advanced settings, and then going to expansion hub address change. Here you'll notice that there's an expansion hub here that has its current address as 4. This is because I've already changed the address of this particular expansion hub. However, by default, the address is 2, and that will all the expansion hubs have the exact same 2 address, and that will confuse the phone if you do not change the address. So when you're using two of them, you make sure you need to change it to something other than 2. Remember which one you've changed, and also just keep, keep track of which one you've changed such that you remember so that when you actually get to the part where you're doing the configuration with the robot, um, you know which one is which. Once you've changed it, you can go back to your main screen, and you can uh, go to the three dots up here and press Configure Robot. Once you have done this, you can press New Configuration and press OK, and you can press uh, Scan here. You can press OK, and you'll notice that this Expansion Hub Portal 1 shows up. Now what you need to do is you need to click this, um, and you'll notice that the Expansion Hubs have turned green and blue blinking. Um, so what you need to do in order to determine if you forgot which one is which, all you need to do now is you can press save here, press, type in a name here, I'll just type in, how about, uh, we'll just type in E because that's easy for me to type, press enter, um, press OK here, um, and I will press save, and I'll press, uh, or I'll press, uh, yeah, press save, I'll type in E, I will press OK here, and it will have saved. Now all I need to do is I need to activate my new configuration um, and I can go back. The robot will restart and once it has completed restarting you'll notice that the uh, two expansion hubs will light up green and blue again um, and the number of times the light blinks blue, so in this case this one will blink four times, this will blink twice, the number of times the light blinks is the, num is the address number of the expansion hub. So if you forgot which one you set to which, this is a very easy way to find out. Now what you need to do is go to configure robot, edit your configuration that you just created, go to Expansion Hub. In my case, I have a motor plugged into Expansion Hub 4, so I'll go to Expansion Hub 4, press Motors, um, and this particular one is a Rev Ultra Planetary, so just make sure you select the correct uh, type of motor. I'll select Ultra Planetary, and then you enter here the name that you have written in your hardware map on your code. So this is the particular name. If you, you have to enter this exactly the same as it is written in your code, otherwise it will not work. Um, I currently don't have a particular code for this one, so I'm not going to write anything in here. But the same process is same for servos. You write the same for each port, um, and you select the correct type of servo, uh, selecting the correct type of uh, Rev servo. A Rev ser uh, Rev Smart Robot servo, to note, uh, Rev, ser Rev Smart Robot servo is always considered a servo regardless if it is in con continuous rotation mode or in regular, ro regular mode. So, once you've done that, um, if you have any sensors plugged in, you can go to I2C bus 0. You notice the IMU is already selected here, so that's fine, but you can go to I2C bus 1, you have to press add and just add your device, particular device that you're using. So once you have completed your configuration, you press save, press OK with the correct name, and you go back and your robot will restart and your configuration will be complete. Um, so. I hope this helped understand a bit more about the FTC wiring system and how to configure a robot. If you have any further questions, please reach out to us or leave your question in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.